Buon pomeriggio a tutti e tutti. Siamo qui eh, per un evento straordinario, un webinar, un incontro in presenza stesso tempo organizzato da Bibelot. Eh, Bibelot è il bollettino online delle biblioteche toscane. Io sono Antonella Lamberti e sono una collaboratrice di Bibelot, eh, cui direttrice di Asta Asta mi ha incaricato di eh, farvi gli onori di casa virtuali per questo seminario che eh, riteniamo di grande interesse per la comunità delle bibliotecari e dei bibliotecari, eh, soltanto fiorentini, italiani e internazionali, e che abbiamo avuto la fortuna di poter organizzare, anche se in termini molto celeri, ehm, per, ehm, grazie a una virtuosa collaborazione, perché sono sempre le collaborazioni che rendono possibili le cose. In questo caso Bibelot è stata appoggiata dall'Aide Toscana, che pure in questo momento sto rappresentando, che vi dà il benvenuto, e l'Università di Parma con la professoressa Maria Tattaro e il professor Gesù Slava, naturalmente che è qui con noi, eh, che ci parlerà dell'intelligenza artificiale e le competenze mediatiche e informative. Eh, soprattutto eh, focalizzandosi su quale impatto possono avere sulle nostre competenze già acquisite, in particolare su quelle di scrittura, ma più in generale parlandoci di come è importante che noi siamo in grado di conoscere e utilizzare questo oh, nuovo strumento tecnologico che eh, può avere un impatto estremamente eh, certo negativo ma anche estremamente positivo, una ragione importantissima per essere in grado di padroneggiarlo. Eh, Questo incontro è trasmesso in streaming sul canale YouTube della Biblioteca degli Oblate e quindi ci sarà la possibilità eh, di seguirlo con i sottotitoli. C'è anche un link eh, nella locandina dell'incontro che incontra una traduzione in italiano delle slide. Speriamo che sia al vostro interesse e che riusciate a seguirlo eh, con, con tutte le possibilità di fruirne al massimo come merita. Eh, vi auguro buon, buon ascolto, buona chi è in ascolto e buon incontro anche in presenza. Al passo il microfono alla professoressa Campano. Grazie mille, Maria Alberti, io sono Anna Maria Tampano eh, dell'Università di Parma. Vi chiederete che ci faccio qua. Eh, in realtà questo è un follow-up di un incontro che abbiamo fatto a Parma, che era la fine di un progetto europeo eh, sulla gamification per insegnare la transliteracy. Eh, in realtà durante questo progetto ci siamo convinti dell'importanza dell'intelligenza artificiale e come questa intelligenza artificiale cambierà molto il nostro lavoro e ci siamo uh, cominciati a concentrare sull'impatto dell'information literacy eh, sull'impatto che avrà l'information literacy o la transliteracy eh, dall'intelligenza artificiale e questo è stato il motivo che abbiamo coinvolto Jesus Slau che è venuto dal Messico eh, Jesus è un grande esperto dell'information literacy, sicuramente ciascuno di voi già lo conosce, eh, è nell'Università di Veracruz, ma è un esperto dell'UNESCO, ha collaborato a livello internazionale con molte altre università, non solo l'Università di Parma. E, ehm, e soprattutto lo conoscerete, penso, per quello che ha fatto per IFLA, eh, ha preparato delle linee guida per l'information literacy che sono tradotte in italiano e sono disponibili per tutti e ancora molto 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 attuali. Eh, oggi in particolare Jason Blau si focalizza su una competenza di base, la competenza della scrittura che è legata alla competenza della lettura. Eh, io non so quanto voi siate consapevoli di quello che sta avvenendo con l'intelligenza artificiale, è un grande cambiamento, no? c'è chi ha detto che è un cambiamento simile all'uso del computer nel, nella nostra attività quotidiana. Eh, siamo pronti? Eh, ecco, questa è un'anticipazione della domanda che vi farà Jesus alla fine. Eh, c'è la possibilità, quindi, negli ultimi minuti di questa conversazione, di fare degli esercizi. Eh, quindi eh, state attenti a tutto quello che vi dice perché poi alla fine facciamo un'interrogazione.
<ride> allora ringrazio tutti i presenti e quelli online. È eh, il mio piacere di dare la parola a Gesù Simao che ripeterà la sua eh, presentazione già fatta a Parma, ma spero con eh, un pubblico più ampio. Grazie Gesù. Grazie. 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 Ok, we got it. Well, thank you very much for for the introduction, Maria, and thanks to Antonella for organizing this quick talk. And I also thanks to you for being here this afternoon. And also thanks to those who may join the conference in a remote, you know, online. Uh, please let me know how, you know, your questions or your concerns, and I can try to, 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 to respond or, or we can discuss it. Well, I would like to say that it's a great pleasure to be in this city. I have just had lunch at the top of the building, and it's a privilege to have this lunch with the dome view. I think it's, it's, you have to promote this view so that the library becomes also a, a tourist attraction because I really enjoy the view and the opportunity to be here. I would like to say thanks to Ana Maria. Ana Maria uh, is a long uh, standing friend. I don't know, more than 20 years or I can count them by now. Uh, and I would like to say that I admire Ana Maria Whenever I think about Italian libraries, Anna Maria comes to my mind. She's probably the most visible face of Italy, you know, outside Italy in regard to libraries. So thanks, Anna Maria, and congratulations for the work that you do. And thanks again to Antonella for taking the time to organize this, this, uh, this talk. Okay, uh, my objective this afternoon is to not to share answers, but to share concerns and probably questions with you about the impact of artificial intelligence in, in our uh, writing skills. The talk will be divided into parts. One, uh, I will give you know, the, the regular talk that I have prepared. In the second one, I would like to have a, a, a brief exercise with you uh, for those who are present, we're giving paper uh, to, to, to participate, basically about the things that you see as opportunities of the library to promote and to foster writing skills. And for those who are away uh, participating online in the conference, please send via chat or, you know, uh, of Zoom your, your, your replies and or questions if you, if you have some. Okay, so one is we'll talk about, we will give the talk, and the second, we do the exercise. And I was told that we have an hour and a half, so I'll try to finish at four. So it will be about 40 minutes of my talk, because it's 322. And then the rest of the time, we can do the exercise and share in what you have in your mind in regards to this topic. Okay, I don't know, I think I. I told the gentleman, the technician, that I could move to the front. Yeah, can I move to the front? Not me. Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking about the camera. Can you see me? I don't know. No? Better stay behind the Okay. Anyhow, I want to be closer to you, but no problem. Okay, let's begin. Artificial intelligence is a new technology, but we have had technology over centuries. And every, well, maybe not every, but most of the technologies that, that we use are affecting the way that we behave. For example, the, uh, I showed to, to my University of Parma attendees that 
when we go to the gym, yeah, we're exercising for what is what what's the reason for going to a gym? Carla? I don't know that it's there. Why do we go to a gym or academia? Wow. I don't know what the word is in Italian. Wow. Why do we go to the gym? For health. For, for health. Okay. That's a good, a good answer. But there's another one behind. We go to the gym for health reasons, to relax, to be fit. But why, you know, what's the, the, the question, be, what's the reason behind? We go to the gym because we have cars, we have buses, we have trains, and we don't walk anymore. Second, we don't do exercise in our regular jobs. We may be sitting, if you're a reference librarian, you will be sitting behind a desk, maybe four hours, six hours, depending on your work, working shift. So, these technologies, you know, driving vehicles have limited our walking uh, capacity. So in order to keep this capacity, we go to an artificial place that is a gym to keep fit. So the same has happened with the calculator. You know, the calculator arrived in the 1980s or 1990s, yeah? And nowadays, I can see that most of us, including me, we use more our cell phone that has a calculator to do a simple sum or a simple rest because we know it will be more uh, exact and it will be quicker. So the calculator has taken away a mental activity, summing and resting. And with ChatGPT, we'll have the same impact. But this time, the impact is greater because it's replacing our cognitive capacity. And the main, the main concern, the main worry that I share with you in this presentation is what can we do to keep developing our cognitive skills when we have this technology that can think and express itself almost like a human being? For example, I shared with Ana Maria when we were coming from the hotel to here that it would be good to do an exercise, you know, in order to, 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 to grasp more the, the, the talk. And I said, well, we, we can ask about three questions. We had lunch, and after lunch, I, I asked ChatGPT to help me to write the three questions. They are not probably not perfect, but it's a good start. I have just sent it to Ana Maria to WhatsApp so she can review it and polish it. And I asked ChatGPT to do it in Italian. So the questions are there. And it was done in a few minutes. We arrived about an hour and a half ago. We chat for about an hour and a quarter. But in five minutes, we had this answer. This is great. But like every, every development, it has a, a good and a bad side. Everything is dialectic. So ChatGPT can bring also a, a dark side and also a light one, okay? Okay, I'll try to cover two or four concepts, you know, artificial intelligence in, that is an emerging reality in the impact in writing skills. It may create a generation that doesn't know how to express in writing, which is called a graphic. Actually, the term comes from Latin. Those two, sorry, two second, the importance of knowing how to write. And three, the cognitive ability to, to write, you know, the, the mental process that are required. And learner strategies to communicate in writing. And this is the, 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 the last one that we may, I would like you to invite to do some, to participate in the exercise. You can ask me any questions at any time and I'll be glad to, to stop. Okay, introduction. Well, writing, the bit of, of human, humankind uh, changed dramatically when they developed writing because they could preserve, you know, their history, their developments, their advancements. But writing is a human 
graphic way of preserving and transmitting information. It's a human thing. No other creature on Earth it, it has this ability. But now with the advent of artificial intelligence, and I'm talking about ChatGPT, but when I say ChatGPT, I mean any artificial intelligence application. Right now, I'm focusing on writing. But if you're a, a painter, ChatGPT can do work for you. If you draw things, ChatGPT can draw, draw also things. If you write songs, it can do it. If you sing, artificial intelligence can also replace you. In fact, last night, I watched for, you know, t t Italian TV for, for a little bit. And I don't need to watch the news last night. And now we don't watch TV that much any, anymore. But if you did watch it, there was, a, a, I think, a deputy or a deputy, a lady deputy uh, from Ita the Italian parliament who was complaining that her, her image was altered uh, with, a, with pornographic uh, uh, acts. And she was complaining, she was a beautiful uh, lady, and she was complaining because she was used in, 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 in her image was sent, you know, through to, to, to the media. And she was complaining because certainly they were they were invading her privacy. But this is something that will become a uh, common and we have to be alert. So there are also publications like the one that this was used for this for uh, for this deputy or senator of the Italian parliament. And so when I when I say ChatGPT, I mean any application for uh, the use of artificial intelligence. Okay, what is a graphia? A graphia is an inability to communicate through writing. And ChatGPT or artificial intelligence may will help us to be better writers, but it will also impact those who do not write. They will be less able to do it if they didn't use this this uh, this uh, technology. Now, I, I Ana Maria asked me to send the presentation so it can be translated. And in fact, okay, here I have in English, and here is in Italian. Okay. Well, this poem was done by Chat GPT. I don't know if it is right or not because I don't speak Italian. I can sort of understand some things because of, of my Spanish background. But it was done in less than a minute. If I wanted to write a poem in Italian, even if it's a bad one, I probably need a liter of coffee and probably a bottle of wine in order to get inspired. But even though I will not be able to do it because I don't speak the language, but here the, the software did it in a few seconds. Uh, the picture on, 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 on my right, it's the national, sorry, the main library of the National University in Mexico. I don't know if the poem makes sense. Do you think it's okay? Okay. As long as it doesn't say any silly words. Okay, what are the challenges? Well, one of the challenges, and this is something that worries me coming from a country like Mexico, Mexico is a middle income country. I mentioned earlier in, in, in my previous talk that Mexico is, I think it's number 13 or number 14 in the world economy. Our economy is a large one. So we are in the top in terms of the size of the economy. However, this is, this is economic development. If we talk about social development, Mexico is certainly quite down compared to, to, to its economic achievement. Our population has limited writing skills. If I use ICBN, ICBN uh, books, you know, books that, that have, have the international standard book number, Mexico publishes publish 24,000 books in 2021. 20, 20, and we have 135 million inhabitants. We're also a large country in terms of population. We are the largest Spanish-speaking country in the world, 
larger than Spain. But take a, please uh, keep the, the number of books, 24,000 and 135 million inhabitants. Compared to the next slide, this Spain publishes 250 books per day. So in 2022, it's a year difference, they publish more than 9,000 books. And take a look at the population. They have 43 million uh, inhabitants. So they have a, about one third of the Mexican population, but they publish about three times more than, than we do. Why is that? Because they, I assume the Spanish educational system is a better one. It's a system that is developing writing skills. Now, writing for those who do information literacy. You remember the the, the skills, you know, to, to be conscious of your information need, uh, to be able to retrieve, to evaluate, to use and communicate your information outcome. When you, when you communicate your results, you can do it in different ways, not only writing, it can be by video, photographs, so on, but usually it's in writing, which is the main mean for humans to share what they think or their experiences. So writing is the highest information skill. You know, it's at the top. In order to write, you certainly have to read, you have to uh, some research skills, you have to reading habits. So write, writing is a high cognitive skill. So if the educational system is poor or weak, we will certainly not achieve this uh, cognitive development. So the, the comparison between Spain and Mexico will tell you, you know, what educational system is better. And well, Ana Maria shared with me, and I asked her to allow me to, to share her quote, that in the PISA, PISA exam, Mexico ranks the one before the last. I think Turkey is the last, and we are the next one. You know, in terms of writing skills and, and arithmetic and science and so on. And Ana Maria said that Italy is about is about average compared to other European countries. So I guess there may be a room for for Italy to improve the education to to have you know more uh, productive uh, generations that can communicate in writing. Writing is important because when a country records, you know, writes its experiences, its history, it will certainly have a, a better and faster development. Well, here I have another, 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 another example. My youngest daughter went to Columbia University and graduated about two years ago. And before going to the university, when she said, I, I would like to attend this university, it's an expensive university and one of the four more prestigious universities in, in, in the US. I was surprised that Columbia University had 87 Nobel Prizes that have graduated or were attached to the, to the university. No other university in the world has 87 Nobel Prizes. And the question that, I, that I, I do to myself, what have they done well in order to achieve this development? And I would say, if you want to be a Nobel Prize, you normally have to have a very good writing besides you know, your discoveries or, or developments that you may have worked on. Okay, this is sort of like the background, writing. Okay, I already mentioned that the factors that determine text production or book production or journal production are is the quality of information. Pardon, sorry, the quality of education, the socioeconomic development. Yeah? In the case of Mexico, we have economic development, but the social development is slower. The socio-political system that can foster the this development. We also talked with Ana Maria about lunch today, uh, about the Medici and how they fostered the Florence development. And did it in Florence developed because they had a, the proper 
a political environment that foster, you know, the growth of this great city. And the new factor is, is artificial intelligence. The advent of ChatGPT in November 2022 certainly has, uh, has made us aware that artificial, uh, artificial intelligence is here. Artificial intelligence is an old, I would say, maybe 20 years old technology, but it became popular until this uh, application was given to the world for free. Now they charge, you want to have, you know, the more powerful uh, chat GPT, you have to pay $20 per month. And when you pay a subscription, you have faster answers, and also you have access to a wider uh, amount of information. I subscribe because I think $20 per month is nothing. Even if you have an assistant and pay $2,000, they will not do a poem in a minute. Okay, artificial intelligence uh, or, or the use of ChatGPT is a new, a new, a new application. So there are that many statistics. I don't have a statistics for my own country or a statistics about what librarians are doing either in Mexico or in, or in Italy. However, some of the U.S. Uh, institutions have already some preliminary in numbers. For example, that almost half. Of, of American students are already, are already using ChatGPT, and 50 of them use it to take exams and, and surveys. You're probably aware that ChatGPT can answer the uh, medical exam, you know, the entrance exam, and I think it gets about 85% of the of the items well done. So it's it's a smart application. In in regard to the UK, they talk about 67%, almost 70% of secondary education students also use uh, ChatGPT. I don't know what's the statistics for Mexico or for Italy, but I will assume there are students using this application or, or, or library users who come to this library and are using this application. For faculty or teachers, they find it useful, for example, I use it to create quiz or surveys in, in an easy manner. A ChatGPT is not perfect. You usually have to know more than the application in order to see if the outcome is correct. Because ChatGPT will give you an answer that always sounds good, sounds nice, but you have to check if it is right because you know ChatGPT uses the information that is available to the internet. And all the information is reliable or correct. Uh, the chatbots provided by, by students with individual, individual support and advice is as high as the accuracy is as high as 91%. If you're doing, if you, for example, are going to take an exam tomorrow about entering a library school in Italy, you can ask GPT to check, you know, to talk with you and ask, ask questions if you're right or not. So it's, it's a useful uh, a chatbot for a preparing exam. Now, one of the ethical principles that a information in artificial intelligence literacy has to take in, in, into account, especially for libraries. One, I think libraries have an opportunity to offer ethical training on artificial intelligence. Those who do information literacy know that one of the things that we uh, promote is that respect to intellectual property. In other words, to do references, to cite, to provide a bibliography. Well, we, we can do the same thing with ChatGPT in, in regard to, to whatever the student is doing. The second opportunity is to warn students about the biases and, and, and things that may not be correct done by ChatGPT. We have to be alert that ChatGPT is done by humans. So it will have the same strengths and weaknesses that any human being uh, may have. The third one is the intellectual property legislation of your country. What is the intellectual property legislation of Italy? Does it allow to, to use it? There are some organizations 
that are suing uh, OpenAI, you know, that is the company that developed uh, ChatGPT. They're suing it uh, in order to, to defend the information that they provide because ChatGPT takes information from anywhere, even though it doesn't recognize authorship. So there are some 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 issues in regard to that. The second one, the last one, and sorry, the numbers are not correct here, is that we have to protect privacy. ChatGPT, whatever you put in the free access uh, mode, whatever you input, it will become part of the information base or database of ChatGPT. There have been some studies. Uh, there was one done in South Korea, though the, the military, certain unit of the military of South Korea uh, was using ChatGPT, and they put data. And they discover that when you ask a, a similar question, ChatGPT would use their, their information. So be careful with your private, private data. For example, I do an annual letter. And I have done it for about 40 years. I do it every year in December, uh, giving a summary of my own you know, happenings of the year. And it's about four pages long. And I mentioned my, my children, and now grandchildren in, in the letter. But I wanted to translate it, and I was lazy. I assume I speak well English and write it well, but I, I used ChatGPT because I could do it in two minutes. What I did, I took the names of my children. If someone was called uh, Frida, I would call it Ferdinand. So I changed the names so that ChatGPT would not recall that those data was of certain names or, or people. This is something you have to do when you use ChatGPT. Okay, writing, as I said before, is a complex process. It includes not only the cognitive factors, but also the affective aspects of, of, of a person or individual. And it's a skill that is not becomes in our brain, you know, when we are born, we have this disability. It is something that we have to, to learn through formal teaching. And here is where the library can have a role, a new role in this uh, new environment to, to, to have, you know, a formal a fostering of writing skills in order to, to acquire it in a systematic way. Now, what is the process that you need to, to undergo in order to write? And by the way, I'm, I'm missing a, an I. Uh, one is that you have to be able to, to write. You know, I would say that number one is not valuable nowadays because we seldom do handwriting. I myself prefer to do the writing in a computer than do it with a pen or a pencil. Uh, when I went to school, I had to do all these long, uh, long uh, sheets of paper doing it by hand. Now, I don't think I, I can do a full sheet of with handwriting. But <clears throat> this is something you have to be aware of. Second, syntactic. You have to know the grammatical rules of the language. If you're writing in English, Italian, or uh, Catalan. Third, you have to have a good vocabulary, good lexicon, a, you know, a good number of words in order to be able to, to, to express yourself in, in, a, in, a, in a fluent way. The fourth, the semantic content of the words. You know, how it's, uh, what is the meaning of those words that, that will give the meaning of your sentence or your text that you want or you can't want, want to have in mind. And the text talk is produce a, con a, a text that is relevant to the audience that you're writing for or what you have again in your mind. You know, the style that is appropriate for your topic or for the audience. So this is a, the process. Graphomotor, syntactic, lexicon, semantic, and text. And right now, think about the library. What can the library do in this writing process? Okay, what are the linguistic skills? One, obviously, you have to listen. We can increase our vocabulary by listening, like we are doing right now. Hopefully, you will increase vocabulary. Uh, you have to speak. Uh, three, 
reading that is quite relevant to the library. And number four, the, uh, the writing expression. This will be the linguistic skills. The previous one is the process of writing. This is the skills that we need to have in order to, to, to write. Okay, a summary of what I said. Writing, the key factors. You have to have good understanding of the, of the language in written form. Second, you have to understand the meaning of the words. That's why it's important to read. The more that we read, the more we understand a text. A, and this will a, have, a, as a consequence, a large vocabulary. And the fourth, oh, sorry, the reading comprehension, to understand what we read. And the last one, some research capability, you know, to find facts, data, numbers, and so on. What do you think about it? Is it easy to write? Okay, learning strategies. Something that students have to uh, keep in mind or library users have to keep in mind is that whatever you get out from, from chat GPT or artificial intelligence applications is that it is good for this essay sample. You know, you can ask GPT to do a, a draft and then you can correct it. You can do a plans, schemes about a, your, your, your work. You, you can ask, for example, if I'm writing, thinking about the subject, I ask ChatGPT to, to, to help me to do so like an outline. For example, I wanted to develop a home to develop some policies for pets. I have a, a few comments that I rent, but in I, we allow pets. So I want to write some, some, some guidelines of what people should do if they have pets. And it was very good. It even included things I haven't thought about pets. You know, I have to have a, a, a I don't know what's the word for, for a, a rope. You know that they could only be come to, to the to the premises using this rope and so on. It's, it's also very good for presentations. I don't know if you have used uh, something like an application that is like a PowerPoint with artificial intelligence. You can ask and say, I want a, a presentation about Florence uh, French and libraries, and it will propose you a, a topic. Now, also, for example, the images that you see here on my presentation, they were done with Bing. I will put the title of the presentation in, in the software proposed me a picture, and I could choose the different applications. Okay, so presentations, you can get inspiration about introductions, topic lists. I already mentioned, for example, number four. Uh, I went to China in May of last year. And they asked me to do a, a, a talk. I was well prepared. But when I got there, they asked me to speak during the opening. And, and they wanted me to speak five minutes. And five minutes is about two pages. I said, no, I cannot do it in, in such a short time. But as ChatGPT gave you know, the, the scriptures, and it was very good. I only changed the word that were not politically correct. Anything that happened? To do with democracy, I put it away because you know it's not relevant for the changes. But it was an easy way to solve a, a problem. And then I said, well, change this or write this, and we will get you a draft. Topic list summaries. Now I think the last development of ChatGPT in I think it was a month ago, they call tokens it to words. They are really like I think you can. You could put it at the beginning at 120 something words and it will translate or interpret or summarize. Now I think you can put more than a, a hundred thousand words and it will summarize it quickly. So the capacity of analyzing is high. To prepare for, for exams, and you can say I'm having an exam on Italian history and it will give you an outline. It is also useful for, for professors, and I would say it's also useful for librarians. If you are doing information literacy, you can create exercises. 
you can you can create even individualized uh, uh, exercises for students, something that we couldn't do in normal environments. We, we cannot, uh, you know, uh, focus on every student. We could do it only as a group. Here you can do it uh, to, to individuals. You can make classes more interesting. You can ask for jokes. You can ask for, for to suggest for videos and so on. You can also have a debate and have ChatGPT as the expert if people and you know, students interact. Now, uh, for, in regard to media and information skills, uh, ChatGPT is taking over some of these roles. ChatGPT can be used to retrieve information, but it has the weakness, weaknesses or the weakness that it doesn't give you the, the reference. And if it doesn't have the answer, it will create one answer. And this is a bit dangerous, but it is always it's good. And you can have certain items, for example, the last name of the author, the title, and you can put that and say, well, can you help me to retrieve the, the permanent house or the full name of the author? And it will give it to you. Obviously, you have to check if you have another source to, to do it. You can go to Google and, and do the, this double one. Yes. So now it's, it's good for retrieving, it's good for evaluating information. For example, you can use, you can test great, great student essays for putting them into ChatGPT. They say, well, check the, uh, the, the grammar, check if this is coherent, and so on. Uh, the, the challenge that we have is the ethical composition of ChatGPT products because they, they, it gets information from everywhere. And you have to tell your audience that you're using ChatGPT so that uh, they know that they mean words or phrases taken from other sources. And the most important thing that uh, information literacy has uh, uh, now more than ever is academic integrity, the, the respect for intellectual property, and to be honest about what you do. Because nowadays it is easy to see that someone gives you a, a, a written paper, but you know if it is his or her or his chat PPT. Okay, as a summary, a student learning and teaching cha challenges. Uh, one is we need to facilitate artificial intelligence in learning. We have to incorporate it. We cannot deny, we cannot uh, prohibit the use of chat GPT. It's a software is here, and we have to learn how to use it. The challenges are, are big, but the opportunities are also big. And one of the things I like to emphasize that at least from the information literacy perspective, now we have to focus, we used to focus on the process. We have to focus on the process and lessen the problem. In earlier times, we focus, focus on the problem and didn't care that much about the process. Now I think it's more important uh, in the process. It's like calculus, you know, when you get a result, you have to explain how you got to, to, that, to that end. We have to foster high technical thinking skills and the, the most challenging task is to evaluate holistically. We probably have to go back to the earlier times and ask for written exams so that uh, we make sure that the student uh, is really doing the, the exam. And something that I would like to say that in order to take advantage, a proper advantage of, of the software or uh, of artificial intelligence application, we need to have institutional policies. We need to have institutional bylaws. We need to have institutional policies. And libraries have to do it too. Here are some institutional policies. This is the second largest Mexican university, Universidad de Guadalajara, that published in about two months ago these guidelines for faculty on how to incorporate a, a artificial intelligence, basically ChatGPT. Here is another one that was the second one that was published, a, another Mexican university giving guidelines to faculty on how to, do, how to integrate this development. Uh, one that was clearly 
who was in August of last year, was this guy for chat GPT created by the University of Pretoria. The limitation of these guidelines is that they are more focused on policies and not you know, pedagogical approaches. Pedagogical approaches are that there are lots of things to be done. We need to learn how to, how to use it, how to evaluate it, how to integrate it into learning processes. So they, their focus are you know, from the framework of policies. And usually they focus on academic integrity, but not on the pedagogical part. And this is something that probably be doing, have to be doing in, in the short term. Here is another article uh, by this uh, in this publication, how students should be excited and benefit from chat GPT. The links are here. And, uh, uh, there is a copy of a presentation with uh, Antonella and Ana Maria that they can share with you. This is a nature uh, article that was published last year in October. So it's four or five months old. And what are the things that we can learn from ChatGPT use in education? Conclusions. Number one, we need to adopt ChatGPT as a learning tool. Number two, I'm using the Spanish abbreviation for information skills. We have to focus information skills or media skills on developing our intelligence, on how to think. We may not be able, for example, when we drive a car, we don't know how the car works. We just know that we have to move the wheel, use the brake, and so on. But how the car was made, how the car moves, is not our concern. We are looking into the car. The same is happening with ChatGPT. Now we have to focus more on how we think in our critical thinking activities, perhaps rather than be doing calligraphy or, or the handwriting part. And as I said earlier, we have to prioritize the process and less about the learning product. In libraries, libraries like this one, or University of Florence or Parma, they need to have librarians with artificial intelligence capability. I would say we need at least one librarian who has, you know, the, these computer skills. If you have a, 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 an artificial intelligence a librarian who specializes in artificial intelligence, you'll certainly be able to benefit from reference services, cataloging, you know, almost every service of the library to benefit from the artificial intelligence capability for marketing purposes to create you know, videos and so on. So this is a move that is, is important to take soon. I know it's difficult because we have you know, very solid or, or not very flexible organizations, but if we do it, it will be great. If you cannot hire a librarian for your, you know, with this speciality, Get someone from outside, perhaps a faculty professor who likes the library, or who is you know, familiar or friendly to the library to come and give you ideas, train the staff. It would be good to train the staff you know, in, in, in the different sections. For example, for cataloging, you can give the title of the book and ChatGPT can retrieve the author or vice versa. Uh, I have had some, some experience, for example, from the National uh, Library of Spain how we have identified certain texts, you know, who was the author. And they're working on, you know, on Incunabula or things like that. We need to overcome resistance. So if you can do a training for your staff, it may be one day, four hours or so, about the benefits of it. ChatGPT can help you in anything, even in the kitchen. I got, you know, flour and eggs. What can I do with them? A ChatGPT will create a recipe for you. Find one. You have a, a child who is crying, who is born. A ChatGPT to, to do a joke or story to the, to the kid. So it is important for libraries to define institutional policies in, in how to adopt it, how to develop it, and how to benefit. Now, artificial intelligence demands cognitive teams. You remember? We need now places in one of the universities and also libraries that are great places 
where people could come and exercise their cognitive skills to develop the cognitive uh, competencies. The specific conclusions, writing demands high cognitive capacity. And now we have to change the way that we teach writing. Artificial intelligence can empower writers, but it can also create a graphia in users. Those who use it will write better. And those who do not use it may lose of the opportunity to, to develop this strategy. The challenge is how to facilitate learning to develop writing skills in libraries. What is the challenge that we have in, in our libraries to foster these skills? We must create these gyms, have a gym in the library, a community gym, perhaps a, a space that you can uh, devote for this end. Here are some references. And thanks for listening. It's four or five, so we can probably do the exercise, have time for the exercise, and have a, a, a brief discussion. For those who are in remote way, I have to ask my, my colleague who is assisting to see how get a chat. You did, okay. Here is something. Present it to you. The, what did it? Uh, it's a first of all, any question? Carla. Carla. <laughs> Are we sure that uh, the answer of John GPT are correct? Thanks, Ana Maria. No, we are not sure. In the fact is that you have to know more than chat GPT so that you can tell if the answer is correct or not. Chat GPT is very educated. It will always give you an answer. And if it sounds good, you know, plausible, something you can believe. But you have to check if it's true or not. That's why it is important. And, and students, library users, have to be aware that they need to know more. Whatever they get out, they may not be right. I would like to add that uh, Any other question, comment? So sorry for the bad English, you know? No problem at all. I was so impressed by the, the third slide when uh, you um, you talk about um, the books, the, the, the thousand books uh, published in Mexico and in Spain and in Italy too. In Italy, I think we have uh, 80, 88,000 in the 2022, I think. And we are 56 million. I, uh, I want to think this now, so because um, writing, in my opinion, is not the answer, because is we it? have too much published books, my, too much, a lot of books, thousands, okay, is uh, is not, uh, there are uh, not only uh, new books, there are translations, there are a lot of come un dato studio, insomma, questo tanto comune. Ma we have to feel, because it's not, uh, in, uh, in fact, uh, in my opinion, uh, the uh, only writing skills. 
the right field is not the only one. Uh, okay, I think a graph yeah, is a, a very I'm frightened. I am I have a daughter, 15 years old. I am very frightened of a graph yeah, in this moment. It's a, a story for me. Uh, but um, we have to to to, to become um, new librarians. I mean, it's a typical story. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Maria. I think that you touched three topics. One is about new librarians. We need not young librarians, but you know, librarians who adopt the new approaches to 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 harvest the best of these technologies. Number two, it is to youngsters like your daughter uh, have the 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 opportunity or the risk of developing writing skills or not. It will depend on the ed educational system. For example, kids now, or, or I myself do it, if there are notes, instead of writing, I now take a picture. Yeah. And third, writing here is, is just an indicator. We could use you know, scientific journals. How many scientific journals are included in in, in Scopus or all these, uh, you know, high paid degree journals. Mexico, I think, has about 20 titles in the easy web of science. This is nothing compared to the number that the US has. That means that in terms of scientific writing, we have, are even lower than general writing. So it's just an indicator to tell that we need to do something with the educational system. And writing is not the only way to communicate. You can communicate through photography, painting, videos, in the speaking, yeah. Okay, and the challenge that we have is that we have to transform our library profession. We have to transform it to focus on this kind of services and perhaps we get away a little bit from collections and focus more on, on the user so that the user becomes, you know, an intelligent human being. It, I don't know if, I don't know how to get to, to the chat part here. Se volete la possibilità di la possibilità di avere 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 la can we go to the exercise part? We can then go to the If there are no questions? Okay. I will give you some background, and then you can ask the question, and then. Sì. See? Okay. Uh, just the, uh, the, the last question. The last question. Okay. Yeah. Well, think about your library. Think about your library that your library is a cognitive gym. And you have to provide a new service. What service would you provide to foster uh, writing skills uh, uh, using chat GPT? And every and every you can have a piece of paper, there are a scratch paper, and you can write, you know. Any activity, action that you can do? Uh, Thanks, Comunque la domanda è, eh, la prima domanda, 
Tra imprese in considerazione e l'integrazione di chat GPT o modelli linguistici utili nei programmi di struttura della tua biblioteca per aiutare gli utenti a sviluppare le loro capacità di scrittura. Ha una risposta aperta, no? Sì, certo. And you also encourage the online participants to do a paper. Can you send by I don't know how to Allora, ripeto la prima domanda, se volete partecipare. Eh, hai preso in considerazione l'integrazione di chat GPT o modelli linguistici simili nei programmi di scrittura della tua biblioteca per aiutare gli utenti a sviluppare le loro capacità di scrittura? Maybe seven minutes. We can take about seven minutes and leave seven minutes more for discussion. For those who are uh, participating online, you could work on the, on the suggestions and send it by via, via chat. Yeah, of Zoom. Dove ce l'avete? Allora facciamo così. Allora, allungare questo Google così il quadro si Sì. Giulio Biagini 2, chiocciola gmail.com No, Giulio Biagini 2, punto chiocciola. Sì. Sì, benissimo. 
No, mi, mi chiede un'autorizzazione. Scusate, mi chiede un'autorizzazione per entrare. Sì, ma dovete anche farmi girare, cioè, condividerle con me. Ho cambiato la modalità di condivisione, giusto possiede il link e poi il link. Sì. Sì. Questo. Sì. Questi tre? Eh? Sì, credo. E, ok, ho scaricato, ho scaricato in Word. E... Le, le, le volete vedere? Sì, sì. E dovete sol soltanto apprezzare, sono giusto? Bene.
Shall we conclude? Hello, ci, ci siamo tutti. Riprendiamo, abbiamo concluso l'esercizio nella stanza. Praticamente alla prima domanda la risposta è negativa, è presa in considerazione perché molti dei partecipanti non conoscevano queste potenzialità, opportunità per la scrittura di ChatGPT. E la seconda parte della prima domanda è legata alla prima, quindi c'è bisogno di maggior tempo per sperimentare questo strumento. Eh, Sull'accessibilità e per la formazione eh, è una tecnologia da cui ancora eh, non riusciamo ad avere il controllo. Quindi ehm, penso che questo, lo scopo di questo seminario, come è stata fatta, in realtà ha avuto lo stesso risultato, è proprio di stimolare eh, una presa di conoscenza che esistono queste opportunità e cominciare a sperimentarle. Naturalmente con spirito critico, come ha detto Jesus, e, e, e cercando di adattarlo a quelle che sono le esigenze dei nostri corsi o, dei, o della nostra vita quotidiana. Ridò la parola a Jesus per le conclusioni. Shall we conclude the, the session? Any comments that you may have of the exercise that you would like to share? Oh, 
what I would like to say for those who haven't used it, opening an account in ChatGPT, the company is called OpenAI. OpenAI. You go into openai.com and it's, it's easy. It just asks you for an email and you create a password. And that's it. After that, you can start asking uh, the, 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 the application to give you answers or whatever you want to do. You can translate things, you can summarize, you can expand text, give them a paragraph and say, well, write something of 500 words using these scriptures and they will do it. it and it's free, as I said earlier, the free version allows you to use it for certain time, but the time is, is not for, I would say, for normal use. The one, the subscription, when you pay $20 per month, it, it allows you to a, a greater amount of information, greater database, and also the answer is quicker. For the free part, at certain times of the day, it could be busy, and it will tell you, I'm really busy, wait for a few minutes, and, but in general, the free the free part is it, it works and it's good. Yeah. If you're beginning, I think the free part is, is good. But if you're really using a lot, I would recommend to pay. But you can also check the account. Uh, and this is just in between you and I. You can check the account with, with your children, your husband, your wife, or but do it because this is a, a tool. And there is a forecast that ChatGPT may take away, some say 30% of the jobs, some to 50% in the next few years. But ChatGPT will not be taking away the jobs. Uh, the people, or people who use ChatGPT are the ones who will take away the jobs. So we have to use it in order to really benefit. Thank you. E grazie molte a Jesse Slavo, sono contenta che ha accettato l'invito a venire anche a Firenze e volevo anche dire in conclusione che a Parma stiamo iniziando un progetto proprio sull'uso di chat CBT per la lettura e la scrittura e chi è interessato può mandarmi una mail per essere inserito nel progetto. Penso che questo il primo incontro abbia stimolato la vostra curiosità e ringrazio Bibelot e grazie a Asta che ha dato questa opportunità di ripetere l'incontro di Parma e qualsiasi informazione ulteriore sono a disposizione e sempre appunto all'indirizzo Bibelot e grazie ancora a Antonella per tutto il lavoro che ha fatto Antonella Lamberti grazie a tutti, grazie per stasera Arrivederci. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for coming.